they could not understand fascism. Suddenly they themselves were part of the movement. If you would have lived in Nazi Germany, would you be a part of it? You might think. No way. I would never support something like this. So today we will show you how a teacher did a radical experiment. He drilled his class into discipline and community spirit. But things quickly got out of control. 1967. Ron Jones was teaching history at Coverly High School in Palo Alto, California. He decided to dare an extraordinary experiment. What happened next you will not believe. Hi this is History Recaps. This is the story about an experiment, to recreate Nazi Germany. More than 200 students were involved in it. In just 5 days. And if you don't know. Now you know. The Topic Third Reich A student had asked him a question and he simply didn't know the answer. How could the Germans claim to have known nothing about the extermination of the Jews? How could villagers, railway employees, teachers, doctors claim that they knew nothing of the horrors in the concentration camps? Even when the lesson was long gone, the teacher did not let go of this question. Students threw drill as good as never before. On a Monday, however, he ordered the students to sit down properly for better concentration. Upright, tight, the feet flat on the ground, the hands flat in the hollow cross. Then came the speed drill, get up, sit, zack zack. Over and over again. In the end, the students stood in front of the classroom, Jones gave starting signs, they ran to their chairs and sat down. Jones stopped time, five silent seconds. And that after a few minutes of training. Jones went even further. He gave instructions to read a text. Afterwards discussion, but according to strict rules. Anyone who came forward had to get up, stand next to the table and say Mr. Jones. Only then was he allowed to get to the real thing. Here it was important. To be precise and concise, to speak clearly. Those who answered bored or sloppy repeated their contribution, again and again. Rebels became suddenly role models, their sentences were clear, striking and presented with a cutting edge. Not only the usual ones spoke up, but everyone. The level of questions and answers grew amazingly, they took care and listened to each other. Jones had thought that the students would find authoritarian learning ridiculous, would refuse and get angry. But the opposite was the case. It had been easy to demand discipline and drill from them, incredibly simple. They were more productive than ever. A teacher we trusted. On Tuesday, he entered the classroom and received emotionless silence. Everyone sat upright at their desks. No one had asked them to do that. Their faces were tense, focused, no one grinned. They were waiting for him, Ron Jones, their teacher. He wrote on the board, strength through discipline, strength through community, then he spoke to them. The students hung on his lips, they looked up at him. At the end of the hour, he made a short, jagged movement with his hand, it shot forward, described a steep curve upwards and fell off again. A wave. Jones introduced a new greeting to the class. At the school and on the street the greeting should show, that you were part of a movement. Jones called the greeting the third wave. Waves come in groups of three, the last, but the third is the strongest when it hits the beach. No one noticed the conceptual proximity to the Third Reich. A student recalls Mr. Jones was a teacher we trusted very much. I myself also participated. It was great fun, felt like a game. At least in the beginning. At the time, the boy simply found it interesting to listen to his teacher. Everyone beats everyone up. Over the next few days, Jones went through the school particularly attentively. In the cafeteria, in the library, in the gym, students used the wave greeting when they met. The experiment expanded across the classroom. On Wednesday, Jones distributed membership cards, on three was a red X. It was a special order, to report all those who did not adhere to the rules of the wave. Then Jones preached again, deeds, commitment to the community and up to self-abandonment. His own words seized him, he wavered in his dual role between leader and teacher. He was proud of the achievements of his highly motivated students, of their cohesion. He was proud of himself. And then there were the denunciations. He had commissioned three students to report critics and dissenters. Over 20 came. They reported everything, betrayed their best friends who mocked the wave, and their parents, who expressed skepticism about the wave. All for the good of the community. 
the movement had become her life within three days. Out of control. There were students who were completely absorbed in the movement, but also those who radically decided against it. Students who made jokes about the third wave to their best friends during the break time. Was asked about it the next day by Mr. Jones in front of all the students. Students knew only their best friends could have betrayed them. The teacher Jones became frightened when so many students were willing to denounce their friends for the cause. Jones had to find a way to end the experiment. But how? On Thursday, the class had grown from 30 to 80. The new ones skipped their regular lessons. Jones announced that the third wave was part of a national youth movement that advocated for political change in the country. On Friday, a presidential candidate will announce its official formation at 12 o'clock. A rally should take place in the school. A bizarre coincidence lent credibility to the teacher's announcement at the time. A full-page ad in Time magazine advertised a wood product called Third Wave. The students were thrilled. There was no one who didn't believe Mr. Jones. We would have made good Nazi Germans. Friday lunch in the school auditorium. Over 200 students sat there, tight, upright, the ceiling covered by wide the third wave banners. Jones greeted and 200 arms raised against him, made the wave greeting. The experiment had lasted five days. But that alone was too long. In the auditorium, Ron Jones turned on a TV. A flickering bright surface appeared. The students waited. The screen remained bright. But the students waited, they were trained in discipline and obedience. But after a few minutes it came, the inevitable question, there is no presidential candidate, right? Jones began to talk, no longer sharply, loudly, but softly, guiltily. You are right. But we would certainly have made all good Nazi Germans. Silence. The teacher showed his students a film about the Third Reich. The great movement at Nazi party conventions, community, discipline, obedience. And then the great deeds for the community, terror, violence, gas chambers. Ron Jones looked into the stunned faces. The question was answered. Teacher Jones said. Like the Germans, it will be hard for you to admit that you have gone so far. You will not want to admit to having been manipulated. You will not admit to having participated in this madness. He was right. The next day of school, there was a depressed mood. Nobody wanted to talk about the experiment anymore. Some people would talk about it but most never talked about the topic again. Many, were embarrassed by how easily they let themselves be carried away by the wave. Especially among the older ones, who actually did not belong to the class, but skipped their lessons for the third wave. Would you have been a part of it? Or would you have said no? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and hit the bell.